Warning. I am a complete idiot who forgot to fix something in the last 30 minutes of the episode, so I had to re-upload this thing. I'm really sorry about that, guys. Please forgive me. Viewer discretion is advised. Tooteroo, mofos. Welcome to an, uh, interesting- Really? (laughs) When you get cucked by your ringtone. (laughs) Thanks, Mayushi. Very cool. Uh, Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tutoroo, mofos, welcome to a special, I guess, episode of the R Anime Podcast, where uh, we're not talking about an anime, although, like, in some cases this is very anime, but uh, we're going to be talking about the video game series Kingdom Hearts in this episode, specifically because uh, Shaw and I are huge fans of this series, and um, as, of, as of the release of of this episode will be like a few days before the English release of Kingdom Hearts 3 at long last, a game that we we've been it. waiting for for literally over a decade. Is it um, actually 13 years or is it technically 14? Because I really want to say 13 to go along with that theory of like organization 13, 13 years between the games kind of thing. <laughs> I like really want to go with that, but I feel like it's technically 14. But I don't want to do the math. 14 years since Kingdom Hearts 2 or since the last game cut to come Kingdom out? Kingdom Hearts 2. Early. Okay. Only, only PS2 games count. Well, PlayStation games. Yeah. <laughs> At least Those in are the my real heart. games. Yeah. I, actually, I shouldn't say that because people will get very triggered. But, do you uh, get mad at that? Are people like actually mad if you're like the only ones that matter are like, the PlayStation games? Yes, because at the moment there's a huge war between uh, different parts of the community because lots of people say that Kingdom Hearts 2 is like the best game and that the future games or the ones after it haven't really been the same because they fucked up the story a whole lot and they fucked up the gameplay a whole lot and they think Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be shit as a result and it's just fucking clusterfuck. This is Uh, what happens when you don't release games in a timely manner, like main games that people have been looking forward to, is they start arguing over this stuff and instead we should just be like, yeah, let's just play the game. Let's just do it. Yeah, no, it's... It, it 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 the community is very much like the series itself. It's it's very chaotic. It's very strange. Um, but and anyway, like for, the series itself, I ignore eighty percent of it and wait for the main games to come out. So I just exactly. wait for fan art to come out. Waiting for uh the the games to come out on a console that you actually own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's been an interesting. I guess it's been not twenty. It's not twenty years. It's been um. I guess it's eighteen years because the first like eight, game eighteen out, years. Yeah. Yeah, eighteen years. Like the. Time frame of this series can go out and like join the army and vote. Like this is <laughs> like it can actually be a functioning adult. It's older than my two my two younger sisters. It's yeah. wait, wait, wait. So when did Kingdom Hearts One come out? That was two thousand two. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. 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 Older than my little brother. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's pretty old. It's kind of cool because I guess I don't. I don't know when, like, you guys started it, but I guess jumping right into it, like, I remember, I think I was nine at the time, and I was watching TV, and, like, I'm an only, well, I was mostly an only child until my two half-sisters were born, but, um, so, like, I never really had, like, a video game system or video game console, so I would only play it at, like, friends' houses, and then I saw the trailer for Kingdom Hearts come on TV, and it was, like, oh my god, I can play in Disney World? Holy shit, yeah, I'm getting my mom to buy me a PS2 and play this game. So then I got it, and uh, me and my best friend ended up having, like, long series of, like, both of us just playing the game at, like, her house or my house. And, uh, like, that continued on from Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, and it would be, like, a huge part of our childhood. So the I really just wanted to play in Disney Worlds, and then I got, like, really attached to the series. And it's been kind of history ever since. But, yeah, it's been pretty old. Now I'm old, the series is old. It's kind of weird to think about. Maybe uh, the fact that people are like so divisive on whether or not Kingdom Hearts is good now. Maybe it's like a metaphor for growing up, where it's like <laughs> you're young and everything's simple and fun, and then you grow old and everything's simple and clean. <laughs> yeah, and then you grow old and everything's like overcomplicated and it sucks. Yeah, that's like and now so no weird. one's happy. So I don't have that experience at all of growing up with Kingdom Hearts. I've just gotten into it like in this past year. Um. <clears throat> haven't actually played any of it yet. I kind of want to play 3 when it comes out, but I've just been mm. um, catching up on the story through um, Daniel Floyd's uh, Playframe channel, um, mm. which is the like former voice of the uh, YouTube channel Extra Credits. 
Um, and he's, yeah. Uh, and so what he's been doing is he's been kind of going through it, like, this story mode playthrough to just kind of, like, um, expose you to, like, the gameplay and, like, what's going on. But for the most part, just, like, catch people up on Kingdom Hearts story and also, like, keep it organized because, man, it's confusing. And so getting into Kingdom Hearts as an adult without kind of, like, the nostalgia factor is interesting for me because there's a lot in it that I really like. And, of course, there's a lot in it that's, uh convoluted at best yeah <laughs> um so um so yeah it, it's interesting to not have the nostalgia experience i still think it's overall a good series um but it's definitely um i, I think a different experience for me not kind of just like looking back on all of it fondly and experiencing stuff as we as it goes on and seeing like well that's cool and that's kind of dumb uh yeah. <laughs> so yeah yeah that's interesting uh, as for me, I um, I think out in this call, I think I've like had the most exposure to the series or whatever because mm-hmm. I first started playing it back in like two thousand three or so. I was like seven years old, and it would be at it would it it wasn't mine. Like I didn't actually have a a console back then, so it would be at a family friend's house, and they had a PS two and. For whatever reason, people just liked Kingdom Hearts, so I played it, and I'm like, okay, you know, cool, it's a video game. Um, eventually, you know, of course, I got a PS2, uh, me and my, my family, we, we got it. They got us Kingdom Hearts because they knew we kind of liked it. Um, I didn't actually beat the game for a really long time because I got yeah, stuck on it. Because I didn't know what the fuck I had to do in Wonderland or Deep Jungle, because okay. I'm... The game yeah. is actually, like, kind of hard, especially when you're a kid. Like, I didn't realize, like, you play it now and you're like, oh, this is pretty easy. But, like, when you're a kid, you don't have YouTube, because this is, like, 2002, 2003. Like, yeah. Like, you don't have anyone to talk to. And it's, like, the game mechanics were kind of hard, especially for a kid. So, I got stuck in, like, uh, the jungle, uh, where is it? Like, the Tarzan world. Yeah, I got yeah, stuck, Yeah, the jungle. Too. Yeah, yeah. So, that fucked with me. And, like, it took me forever to finish it, too. But yeah, like it's actually kind of hard when you're playing as a kid. Yeah, because it's not, it's not, ex- it, like I'm not necessarily complaining necessarily because I think yeah. it's kind of funny now. Because yeah, I mean, I mean it, you just you have to figure it out for yourself, like what you have to do in that world, and it's really not that difficult. But like yeah. as a kid, yeah. Um, so before I actually beat Kingdom Hearts one, um, at the same time I got the PS2 for Christmas, I also got a Game Boy Advance SP. Ooh. Which, of course, I got Chain of Memories as well. And that game is extremely linear. It's easy, to, really easy to figure out what you have to do. So I actually beat that game first, even though there were some things that I like didn't understand or whatever. But then I finally went back, figured out what to do for Kingdom Hearts 1. Um, and, yeah, the, the, I guess the rest is history for me, because I, you know, of course, got Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, I had a DS eventually, so I was able to play Days. I did not get a PSP, though, because... Um, Birth by Sleep was literally the only game I was interested in playing on the mm-hmm. on the PSP, so I didn't have that. Uh, did get Dream Drop Distance. Um, I skipped Coded because I heard that they like I don't I didn't even really know about it. It just kind of came out, and it was like okay. Um, is, is that the one where you're data and you're like in the like yeah, in the book? Yeah, because yeah. I heard about it, but I'm like okay, this is too this is too too high IQ for me. This is too much. <laughs> And it, 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 it and it seems to be the least important out of all the games, so whatever. Um, and of course, recently uh, I got the PS3 collections, and now I'm actually playing Dream Drop Distance on the PS4, which is uh, pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, Kingdom Hearts for me is like a life-defining franchise. Mm-hmm. Not specifically because of like my history playing with it, but because... Um, I've been using, the, I've been like really active on the internet since I was 10. And the reason why is because I didn't really have friends in my school because I went to a small school and like 90% of the kids thought that the the only things that I liked, which were Pokemon, Kingdom Hearts, and Inuyasha, they all thought they were fucking gay and wanted nothing to do with me. <laughs> and then the other 10% that were into that were like really weird and I didn't really like them. So and you're like, you guys are really gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're fucking, exactly. So I uh, found myself on the friendly confines of the internet, and I was kind of, like, skeptical or hesitant at first, because I'm like, oh, what if it's, you know, what if no one likes me? Um, but then I go into a chat room, and what do I see in th- in the member list? Everyone's fucking name is a Pokemon Kingdom Hearts or Inuyasha reference. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, great. 
Now I'm here. I was the normal one. You guys were all weird. Yeah, this, this like, it, I finally, I'm surrounded by people who understand me, and <laughs> and that that really, and yeah, that this like, I, I know a lot about not 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 the internet specifically, but it's like I got into the internet, I guess, because of Kingdom Hearts, because I had like so many friends back then that I would talk to. I watch a lot of like let's plays on youtube before like let's play was really a thing like in, like 2006 youtube um re- was always look watching gameplay of the final mix versions because they never came out in america and i was so fucking pissed because they looked so <laughs> cool um so yeah and uh of course like me my uh older sister we also had a uh, we, we watched a lot of youtube poops as well with these <laughs> things um, which were great, and they're probably all deleted because copyright. So sad. Um, Thank you, Article Thirteen. Not very cool. It's not even an imp- <laughs> Article it's not even, like, Thirteen. Implemented. Like it's not even implemented, but I'm still gonna blame it. Article Thirteen, <laughs> Organization Thirteen. Oh my god! Coincidence? Oh my god! Wait a minute. It this must be the now. work of the organization. <laughs> oh my the organization's real plan is to ruin the internet. That's. <laughs> this is all connected. Oh my god. Did we just solve the internet? I, I I think we did. They're trying to drive everyone into losing that one outlet so that they will all slowly become heartless so that they have more people to kill with a keyblade and, like, create Kingdom Hearts. That makes sense. That's that's the plan. That's the yes. plan, boys. Well, you heard it here first. You better be... They better, like, source us on that when it's like, how did the internet die? Well, these one guys on this podcast <laughs> talking about... A, an old they figured it, figured it out from the beginning. From the beginning. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool to hear because mine was kind of like... Mine is not, well, not the same, but it was kind of like me and my best friend were, um, like, we obviously hung out a lot because we were best friends, but uh, her older sister was, like, in high school when we were in elementary school, and she was a mega weeb, and, like, she'd be that person who would, like, make her own costumes and go to Otakon kind of thing, so she would be the, like, I was getting, like, snobbed with the sub versus dub shit since I was, like, seven, where we'd be watching, like, Card Captor Sakura, and she'd be like, you guys can't watch the dub. You guys got to watch the sub on these VHS tapes. So we'd be watching these VHS <laughs> Damn. tapes. Yo, yeah, so it's been ingrained in me, this snobbery from a young age. But she was, um, she naturally finished the game before we did. And I actually remember being at my best friend's house, watching the ending scene of Kingdom Hearts 1. And I was just like bawling hysterically. Because I think, you know, you're a kid and it's a pretty <laughs> bittersweet ending to the series. But I will like always remember that. Where I'm like watching this ending to this series, I'm like, this is just so sad. Alexa played Despacito, like, this is so sad for me. And then, as you said, I didn't actually beat Kingdom Hearts 1 for a while. Half because I got um, stopped at the Tarzan world, but also half because my game was like malfunctioning. And for the longest time, I couldn't hit the X button. So I oh, couldn't shit. attack anyone. <laughs> and I wasn't, and like, kid me is like, yeah, this shit is broke, but, like, I don't know if it's the controller or my actual PS2. And my mom wasn't going to get me a new PS2 for Kingdom Hearts. She's like, I got you this one. So I kind of just gave up on that for a bit. And then two years later, Kingdom Hearts 2 came out. So I got that, and it was not bugging with my P- my PlayStation. So I got to play that and beat it. Huh. And, yeah, so it was a weird time. Being a kid sucks, because you're like, what's going on? These how do you video hard. games? Yeah, <laughs> I know that. But how feel. do I buy a new PS2? My mom won't let me. This sucks. So, yeah, then I got to play uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, and it was, I was older, the game was, I think, a bit easier, like, playing style-wise. Like, I think the game controls were a bit easier, at least in my opinion. But, yeah, yeah, definitely, actually. Yeah. Like, there's, like, I think the main difference that stood out to Kid Me was, like, if I'm in one world and I jump off the side of the, like, like a bridge i fall all the way down to the bottom but in kingdom hearts 2 they kind of have the barriers so you can't just like jump off the side by accident like that's like a big thing that stood out to me and then like the actual controls were a bit easier so i finished kingdom hearts 2 and that was pretty cool we can probably get into more of that in a bit but like i did that and then i didn't really get any of the console games because both because i didn't want to and because i'm like oh you know like i'm just gonna wait until kingdom hearts 3 comes out so so here we are (laughs) but it's kind of it's been one of those things that's left like a profound impact on me and i think some of the most powerful moments of the kingdom Hearts series kind of touched me in a way that no other medium or series will and it's you know i never got a tattoo but i was like if i ever get a tattoo what would it be of and it would probably be something related to the kingdom Hearts series 
And I think hmm. something that, like, really inspires me about the series is this kind of, like, I don't know, I think they say it in, like, a really cheesy way, but it's kind of like, no matter how far apart you go from your friends or from people you care about, like, as long as you think about them and care about them, like, showing how they left, like, a positive impact on you and vice versa, then, like, your relationships were meaningful. And I think that's, like, a very adult lesson that you can take away from the series that has always stuck with me. I don't know if I'd get the quote, like, tattooed on me, legit, no, no confirmation on that. But that's probably something that's, like, really stuck with me that no matter how good or bad the series has been, I think you can find a lot of wholesome positivity in that. So I always will appreciate it for that, no matter how long I'm waiting for Kingdom Hearts 3. Right. And I I think that's something that really is interesting, because at least for me, experiencing all of this as an adult, I feel like the thing that worked the most in the Kingdom Hearts series, which is a really rare thing for a series that's a mixed bag, Mm -hmm. is the emotions where they were trying to, like really emotionally touch you yeah like because normally i feel like in series that are like mixed bags in terms of quality like oftentimes they uh um like the things that it'll fuck up the most are the moments that they're like really trying to be emotional but it's like almost the opposite for kingdom hearts yeah um where it like almost like it pretty much sticks the landing every single time it goes for something that's like emotionally impactful or powerful um versus like the thing that it misses more often is like the edgy shit or and stuff like that (laughs) yeah um so i I found that to be pretty interesting um but yeah i really enjoyed the ending of kingdom hearts one like that emotionally hit me again experiencing it as an adult even though like just beforehand there had been some stuff that was like kind of dorky with like the uh gurren lagan ships and the yeah (laughs) kingdom hearts is light I always remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then they go straight to, like, that emotional, like, climax of them getting, like, separated and stuff. And it's like, damn, that just works somehow. When you think that, like, a, a Kingdom Hearts game, so that comes out for, like, kids like me and Maz, and then it's a series with Disney and Final Fantasy characters mixed in with these original guys, have a pretty bittersweet ending compared to, like, a lot of other medium, especially media in the West, you know? Because this is, like, from Japan, but they bring it over... And we're used to a lot of happy endings, especially in Disney series. That, like, really hits hard when you think about it. Like, you play this whole game, and, like, they just get separated in the end, and you have no idea what's going on. I think that's, right. like, pretty impressive, all things considered. Yeah. Kind of related to that, um, in terms of, like, you don't know what's going on. The, something that's so interesting to me about Kingdom Hearts is that it's probably the last thing from my childhood where it's, like, I was always in like I was really invested in like the story I guess as a kid and it's like just now wrapping up cuz Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be the end of the Xehanort saga. It's not going to be the last game in the series, that's what they're saying. But yeah. like the story it's been building up to this whole time. But and, this like, is kind of like the finale of the basic story. That's kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. the, the, so they'll probably reboot the series with like similar concepts but different characters and like different mm-hmm. like bad guys, but this is the end of like the main crew. Which is, like, it. that's what, I was saying this, too. I was, like, once Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out, I feel like this is kind of, like, closing the book on my childhood. Like, this will be the end. I'm 25 now, and it's kind of, well, pretty long childhood, I guess. Thank you, Kingdom (laughs) Hearts 3. But uh, it feels like this will be the last um, remnant of my childhood that will get the conclusion that it's been waiting for for a while. Yeah. Especially since, for, because I remember... Like, looking up the secret ending to Kingdom Hearts 2 on YouTube Mm -hmm. in, like, 2006, and everyone thought that that was Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. (laughs) When actually it was Birth by Sleep, and it's like... It, it, and it's, it was so much, it, it's just like so, so funny seeing like all the fanfics and the fan, like the fake box cover of Kingdom Hearts 3 for the PlayStation 3 back in like 2006. And then like once they actually revealed the real box art for this game, it was like, it's like, oh my god, like this is actually a thing now. Like yes. what? It's been so long. And yeah, so much has happened. It's just, it, it, it's like this game coming out, it's like, feels like, yeah, I don't know. It, 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 and just like what we're saying, uh, it's like a childhood dream, I guess. Finally so, being so I guess the takeaway here is thank you, Square Enix, for dragging out many childhoods for an entire decade with spinoffs <laughs> rather than it's completing your th- damn series. Both a thank you, but also a fuck you, because I'm yeah. like, you know, I could have died before Kingdom Hearts 3 came out. Still yeah. might, but I'm like, hoping not. You know, you guys could have just come out with this in a reasonable time frame, but here we are. 
Speaking of ending childhoods, we're still watching car Chinese cartoons afterwards, so maybe we're dragging the childhood on a bit longer. But for, like, actual, you know, childhood series, I get this is the end. But it's also, I was kind of talking about this online, like, randomly tweeting about it, but I think with something like this, and to a lesser extent, Jump Force, it's just, I'm so excited that they exist in the first place that I don't really care if it's gonna be good or not. Like, I think it'll be good, but even if it's not, I'm just happy it exists, which is probably pretty pathetic, but I mean, it's been 13 years, so I'm, I'll be pathetic about Kingdom Hearts 3. This will be my <laughs> freebie. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it also kind of jumps into, um, like, I think there are some people, like, I sure, I think you're get, you kind of get it, like, a bit more than other people, 17, where they're like, we don't really get why this series is so good, like, why do so many people like it? But it really is just, like, you know, nostalgia and our childhood, but also has some, like, really impactful emotional moments, too. And I'm yeah. glad that they've, that's come across in your watch-through, playthrough watch-through. Yeah, and, and so there's the thing. Like, I, I we were talking to... I we brought, we brought this up before the podcast, but we were talking to Senris on the podcast, and he's not as much of a fan of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, and uh, he was just like, yo, this shit sucks, guys. And we're yeah, like, fair, I, but disagree. Uh, yeah, because and he's in a similar boat to me of having experienced most of it while older, um, mm -hmm. and I can't fault him for that because there's a lot in Kingdom Hearts that's just kind of okay. So for an example, like I just don't know how to feel about this. Like the goofy death death fake out in two. <laughs> like what the fuck was that? Well, like, you see, there's a constant theme of like Donald is actually a giant piece of shit and he never heals anyone in a normal time frame. So Donald could have healed Goofy, but it's actually in character for Donald to not heal Goofy because he never heals anyone who's about to die. Like, so yeah, yes. so so the point being uh, that I'm trying to make here is that it's just like there's some sus stuff in Kingdom Hearts. Like I will not fault anyone especially people who experienced this as an adult for just not getting it yeah. but at the same time like in between that sus stuff there's so much that's just like really strong and really great like um i think there's one scene in it where i so far where i've genuinely like teared up and that was the um axel roxas goodbye scene oof um, bro it's kingdom hearts 2 is a giant roller coaster that nothing oh, yeah. fucks me up um, okay i've realized that like in anime now or in like media now nothing gets me more than like people losing their memories of people they care about. Like, that shit fucks with me. And that started with Kingdom Hearts 2. Like, my trauma and, like, triggering of that has started in Kingdom Hearts 2 during the whole Roxas arc, as you see, like, him enjoying right. his time with his friends and seeing them forget him to the point where, like, he becomes Sora and then, um, his, he, like, Sora is leaving the world and, like, see saying goodbye to these guys who he doesn't know and then is, like, crying for some reason. Like, that shit fucks with me. And that's actually, yeah, I was going to get into that a bit more later, but that's just, like, I think the emotional narrative of Kingdom Hearts 2 is probably, like, my favorite part of the series. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's got a really strong emotional narrative. I guess, like, at some point, like, whether or not you enjoy Kingdom Hearts comes down mm -hmm. to, like, either your ability to, um like, suspend your disbelief or take the good with the bad, essentially. Yeah. Because... I can see you just kind of being, like, knocked out of the experience by stuff like the goofy death fake out and just, like, what? Just, like, why was that it's, there? I is... kind of like that in a weird way, because that okay, whole part... Really? Well, I like the, um, so the that part is, um, goofy death part for, I guess, like, I guess people know, but I don't know if they know. So that's part of the Battle of a Thousand Heartless in Kingdom right. Hearts 2, which marks the middle point of the series, and that's probably my favorite, like, fight that we engage in. Like, that might be my favorite part of the series that I've played, because I think it's just, like, this really cool hype thing. So I don't view the Goofy death thing as, like, wow, Goofy died. This is so sad. I was like, holy shit, Goofy is dead. And I th I think at the time I thought he was dead, but didn't really think too much of it. I thought mm -hmm. of it as, like, this hype motivator. Like, yo, they killed Goofy. Now we're going hard on all these Heartless. Like, let's gotcha. go. Gotcha. So yeah. I viewed it as, like, a battle cry. And then you get to go and fight with every individual Final Fantasy character and you had just, like, a lot of fun battling all these Heartless to the point where you're in the, um, I guess you're in the valley in Hollow Bastion, where you're just surrounded by mounds and mounds of Heartless, and you're just, like, taking them all out. And that, like, that battle and the conclusion to that battle was just, like, one of the hypest things I remember as a kid. Like, it was the perfect mix of 
you know, it wasn't too overpowering as a battle to get frustrating, but it was just fun enough where you got to, like, enjoy actually taking out every individual thousand Heartless. Yeah, and and so for the most part, I thought that section was really awesome. I personally have, like, a thing against death fakeouts unless there's, like, a lot more of a point to them. Like, yeah, yeah. like, most of the time, I think you either kill a character or you don't. Uh... And so that was just, and so that kind of ten, tends to bug me. And, um, but yeah, I, th- I thought the section as a whole was good. That just felt like weirdly out of place and kind of like took me out of stuff. Cause it was like, like from my perspective, I knew they weren't going to kill Goofy and it was yeah. just kind of like, why are you doing this dance right now? But I, I, I think it makes a lot more sense having like that experience of just like that hype section as a yeah. kid. Because yeah. I definitely didn't think about it too much as a kid. I think at the time I was like, wow, like the, Goofy's gone, like we're done. And I kind of thought of it more in terms of like, um probably more in like a battle sense like I can't use Goofy in my party right now because he's knocked out so right. now I got to go hard on my own but I definitely understand that I... right and as an excuse to include all of the like final fantasy characters to play with yeah. like that's cool like that yeah. was a cool section and that's a, probably a big aspect of Kingdom Hearts is uh sacrificing things for cool factor like we yeah. probably brought up the girl login uh <laughs> like comparison before I can kind of see a lot of comparisons with that where like it doesn't really make sense that we're kind of fighting people in, like, weird, like, darkness dimensions and we're kind of in space and sometimes we can just do really cool badass shit out of nowhere. But I most of the time don't care because it's cool badass shit and we've built up to this final battle after hours and hours of gameplay. So I'm like, right. yeah, let's just fucking do it. I don't care. I, I would say that the thing that I think, because I think you're right, I think a lot of the appeal of, like, a Gurren Lagan and a Kingdom Hearts are actually really similar in some ways. Mm-hmm. I think the thing for me that Gurren Lagan does kind of better that makes it feel like a little bit less flawed than Kingdom Hearts is Gurren Lagan doesn't try and explain itself as much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I and I, I think Kingdom Hearts oftentimes hits these pitfalls when it tries to shove explanations into the shit. It's really just doing cuz it's cool and fun. Yeah, I think also probably you could use the excuse for Gurren Lagan is that um like when they have deaths they commit to it. Like they oh, definitely yeah. Com- yeah. which is a big reason that it is so successful is like if someone dies in Gorn Lagan, they're gone for good. They're not coming back. But right. I think uh I do think it's kind of like a similar cool factor, but I wouldn't say they're like you know, as you said, like y- yeah. Kingdom Hearts probably tries to explain things a bit too much, but they also kind of like they also kinda have to because it's like, why are nobodies here? Like why are these nobodies here? We kinda have to explain them. Yeah, and, and, and there's a different Agree yeah. to which the explaining things is a cool, like, positive, so I can't entirely fault it, because, mm-hmm. like, as convoluted and weird as the story is, and it's at times, like, the explanations for things are bad, they also have a lot of really interesting and cool ideas. Like, I yeah. like how they play with the nobodies and how they kind of play with, um, uh, Zemnus and all of that stuff, and, like, what, um, are, are the nobodies, like, functioning people or not? And they, and they really yeah. ask that question, and then I, I think it's actually really interesting to have, um, because you have, like, the, of course, like, the conversation between Axel and Roxas, where Axel's like, yeah. hey, are you sure we have hearts? And then Roxas is like, I don't know, I can't feel mine, so, like, uh, I then you I can guess see, not. like, and, and then you and see, like, like, Axel's, like, actions, and you're like, well, he clearly has a heart, because look at all the nice stuff he's doing for the people around him, like, how much he cares about these guys. So right. Like some interesting antagonists, too. Yeah, uh, but, I, but I also think that makes sense, like, it makes sense to me from, like, a story perspective, and I think it's cool, of, like, if you woke up one day without memories and were told, hey, you are empty inside, like, yeah. you couldn't really refute that, and I think it's cool how they, um, how they kind of make that work and allow the organization members to sort of be manipulated into that, because it really does make sense from their perspective. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I guess the general pitfalls of Kingdom Hearts are, like, I guess the plot, which has always been, like, somewhat of a meme, because it's, like, explaining Kingdom Hearts, watch the best guy ever two-hour lecture on it, (laughs) or, like, watch, like, this, like, super in-depth breakdown. And I've seen, like, I've seen everything from the Donkey five-minute video explanation to a 20-minute explanation to parts of the two-hour explanation. And I think they all actually do kind of make sense. I think if you try and explain it, it makes sense. But I do think, like, the reason that it is so convoluted is because I feel like they have tried to drag the series out so long, probably for better or worse. And they've introduced some really interesting things. I haven't actually played the games to completion besides 1 and 2, because I did go back and beat 1. But I've played parts of Chain of Memories, parts of um, Birth by Sleep, but I haven't, like, finished them, but I have done the, um, I've watched them playthroughs, I've re- I've watched, like, the cutscenes, and I've done a lot of that, so, like, I know what happens, but 
I'm not like, I don't have that firsthand experience. And I think there is some good stuff in a lot of the other games, even if I'm not really like, I mean, it's kind of a toxic thing to say, but I don't know how necessary they are to the overall thing. But like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's tough. It's like. Here's the here's the problem with Kingdom Hearts overall, the story of it. If you actually line if you actually like lay out all of the events of the series, like in chronological order, it all makes sense. Or at least mostly makes sense. I don't think there's a lot of it that's like totally broken or whatever. It's no. just the fact that the series you know, it started with Kingdom Hearts 1, and I think the reason why this series kind of took off in the first place is because, number one, no one expected this collaboration to really work out. Yeah. And number two, the story has this very simplistic charm to it. Um, and they've kind of went from that where, um, you know, they, they increased the scope of it with, like, Kingdom Hearts 2. But then Birth by Sleep after and beyond, they start really jumping around the timeline yeah. and just start... They like completely retcon some things, and it's it gets really complicated. So it's like not only are you getting new pieces of information, but then it's like you have to completely recontextualize some other parts of the series from previous games to, in order to like make them work. And that's why it's such a clusterfuck, and that's why no one understands it. Right. So I'm not through yeah. Birth by Sleep yet, for the record. I'm only through like uh or like I've seen the playthrough of like one, two, and Chain of Memories so far. Okay. Um, so, uh, so I'm not, I'm not to, I guess, the more convoluted stuff yet. It still has had points where it's like, wait, wait, what? For a little bit, but, um, but yeah, it's been mostly comprehensible so far. Yeah, I think with Birth by Sleep, the game makes sense, but it's also very much, like, a prequel that they're trying to fit in to, like, explain a lot of why things are how they are in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, and then what they will be later on in the series, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. So they do a lot of, like... Setting up the background, world building, building up a lot of the the main antagonist for sure. That's probably the big the big big takeaway. And okay. Then I, well, I that's think... cool because because I've always kind of wondered like w- like what the hell was going on with like the Xehanort thing. Like that's always yeah. been a little bit uh yeah. My favorite Kingdom Hearts move is when they're like, yeah, this is the bad guy. Nah, J.K. That was the main. That was the heartless of the bad guy. Oh wait, the <laughs> nobody is the bad guy. Nah, J.K. He's the nobody of him. Now, this is the real bad guy. But wait, he's in someone else's body who he took over. Like, um, it's like, a, it's a lot of stuff to kind of build up to him. But, like, they finally are like, nah, this is the real bad guy. Like, yeah, this like, is it. So, for not being an anime, Kingdom Hearts is kind of the most anime thing ever, though. Like, It's, like, definitely <laughs> anime as fuck. Well, I mean, it's power of friendship in a game form. Like, literally yeah. the power of friendship, but in a wholesome way. Not that, King- not that the power of friendship isn't wholesome, but I guess it, like, kind of makes more sense. And let's not forget that Organization 13 are, like, the trendiest motherfuckers of all yeah. time. Like, these guys defined the emo scene in the mid-2000s. <laughs> Everyone fucking made AMVs of these guys, oh, yeah. and everyone wanted to cosplay them. Everyone had, wrote, like, fan fictions of them and everything. It was, it was, Very it was wonderful. Speaking of emo phase, okay, so we I wanted to ask this, which is kind of like, this kind of seems toxic, but not really. But like, Maz, can you explain your love of Riku? Because I like Riku, but I was never like over the moon by him, over the moon with him. Is that the thing? Yeah. It was actually um, Dream Drop Distance that really okay. like made me appreciate this character. Because I think that what's so great about Riku is that he starts off the series in Kingdom Hearts 1, he's... Just kind of the asshole rival, like the Gary Oak of the game, yo, you essentially. Like this, yo, this dude ain't naming my boat. I don't give a shit. He's <laughs> not naming the boat. That's like yeah. the initial reaction. He's not taking, he's not cucking me with Kyrie, and he's not naming the boat. I'm the main character, even though my outfit looks ten times dumber than his. Like, we ain't playing with this. Yeah, it's like, you know, he's your friend, but at the same time, fuck that guy, you know? Yeah. And that's that's fun. But more importantly, he, he becomes a bad guy within the game. But then, like, because of the, because of, like, the shit that he did in that game, because he sided mo- with Maleficent and did yeah. some kind of fucked up shit, he then spends, like, the entire rest of the series just trying to make up for that. You know, yeah. like, he watches over Sora and Chain of Memories and then, like, literally becomes Xehanort's Heartless again in Kingdom Hearts 2 or whatever the fuck was going on yeah, there. Yeah, he wanted to, like, he was protecting someone to do that. But he needed to, yeah, because he needed to get the, um... He needed to open his heart to the darkness. Unironically saying that. That's like an actual thing. Like to get more power and then he became like his heartless again. 
Yeah, and, and again, that's that's a moment that I don't entirely know how to feel about, because I think they played with it just fine, but it almost fe- like there are a lot of like little threads in Kingdom Hearts that just feel a little bit bloated almost like i mean i didn't even know how to like actually say that as a sentence so i understand <laughs> yeah it's, so, so it's it's like um i don't have a problem with the fact that riku ended up looking like xehanort and like all of that stuff but just kind of why yeah i mean um, i don't really know but yeah any, anyway anyway I mean, there, there's this a handful is... of things in kingdom hearts that are like that of just like why was that in why was that thread included because it kind of got just like wrapped up all of a sudden and didn't right. have that much of an impact on the overall story like it was probably like a red yeah. herring right to try and trick you into thinking he's a thing i don't know Mazi- uh, yeah maybe uh, it's for i mean honestly i don't really know and i i, I don't really care yeah, <laughs> anyway it it's like, like it, i it's just like, like yeah, this whatever. I just like this character because it's, like, he does, he, like, goes so far out of his way to, like, really prove himself that he's, like, yeah. the oh, good guy yeah. now. And then, uh, I guess spoilers, but, like, at the end of Dream, towards the end of Dream Drop Distance, like, Sora legit fucking loses. Like, he essentially wears himself out by fighting Xemnas, and then the yeah. organization captures him. And so Riku has to, like, go in and fucking save him. And that's kind of, that's how, that's why Riku it becomes a Keyblade Master. He passes the mark of mastery, and that's why Sora fails. And it's, like, just that whole, re- like, like the entire series is, like, his own redemption arc, and I just think it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, and that makes sense. Riku is a fun character, and I, I especially like him at the end of Kingdom Hearts, too. Like, that was some good shit. Yeah, I feel like I do like Riku. It, he was just not, like, someone I felt immediately drawn towards. So it's not even, like, a slay. I just like hearing why people like him, because mm. I think... The main, I feel like I generally like most of the characters, but I feel like the main draw of the series to me has been, um, like, Roxas and Axel, especially Roxas, because it's always mm. such an interesting thing where, you know, you can play through Kingdom Hearts 1, well, at least if you're me, you get stuck on the jungle area and then wait for the new game, so hopefully it works <laughs> on your PS2. Then you start Kingdom Hearts 2, and it's always great to hear, to recount and hear how people felt about the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2, because you start the game as, like, Roxas, and you're like, who is this clown? I just want to play as Sora. Like, I'm done. I don't want to play as this random dude. I've waited yeah. so long. Give me Sora. So you dude, start with- can I, can I, I just want to say, I remember, like, before I got Kingdom Hearts 2, I saw, like, gameplay of Kingdom Hearts, uh, of, of the game, like, as Roxas, and I'm just like, what the fuck is this yeah. crap? This looks terrible. <laughs> I was so mad, right? You're like, what the fuck? Like, everyone was, like, universally mad at this shit. They're like, I didn't want this. Where is Sora? Like, when do I get to Sora? Like, I'm done with this. Yeah, So you exactly. start playing as Roxas and you're playing with him and his friends. And they do such a great job of introducing, like, little things just not adding up. Like, oh, this one thing showed up and no one else sees it but Roxas. You know, time freezes and you have to fight some random bad guys. But no one else remembers it. Like, little things keep disappearing here and there. And it's such a great build up to the, um, to the reveal that, like, you're part of Sora and they're healing Sora and, you know, you kind of have to go and, like, become part of Sora's for him to wake up again. And that whole scene of, like, Roxas standing outside of the weird, like, crystal thing holding up Sora, where he says, I guess my summer vacation is over, that still, like, really fucks with me. Like, I feel sad now saying that. And when I was a kid, that just devastated me. I was like, no, I don't want Sora anymore. Please give me more Roxas. I changed my mind, like, Yeah, guys, right? The second like, game is an entire field feels trip, and like oh, Roxas yeah. is so bad. Like I God love no, protect Roxas. Why? And then uh, <laughs> he's like, you, then he goes into Sora, and um, like the sporadic moments you see of like Axel calling you Roxas, and like it never goes away. Like you never forget that you started off as Roxas, and he's now a part of Sora. And even though I was still like cool with playing as Sora again, I still miss that. So the various times where you get to see like Sora acknowledging Roxas as an entity was really just really heartfelt and, you know, made me get get the feels as a kid and now still getting feels, which is part of the reason I think that, uh, is it like, it's not a normal, it's like 358 over two. Like that was one of those things that I never played, but I saw tons of posts about it on Tumblr because everyone found it really sad. And I think it's kind of cool that they flesh out their friendship a lot more, even though I kind of think what's everyone likes Zeon. I think that's the one. Right? Shion. Shion. Okay. She like everyone really likes her, but I don't like. I didn't feel too connected, partially because I didn't play the game, but also because like I kind of knew she was gonna die from the start. Like we all know she's oh, not yeah. the main part of the series, so she's just right. gonna die. 
But her scenes with Roxas were really touching and sad. And then it's just great getting their backstory and seeing how much they mean to each other. So yeah, now that's, we're like that's what the playthrough I'm watching is heading next. So I'm really excited yeah. for that. Yeah, I think it should be pretty heartfelt. But they mm-hmm. the Roxas Axel interactions with each other, like those always were just you know really hit me in the feels and like made me feel super attached to them. Right. Right. I, I do think, think cool. So uh, so I've I've just seen like the very very beginning of um the three hundred and whatever the fuck over two days. Uh, Why is it not three sixty five three fifty two? Because I guess it's not a full year. Okay. Uh yeah, not a full year. Wait wait, wait a second. I have, I have a I have a theory. Um, let me. Uh, anyway. Um, but yeah. So so I just thought the beginning of that, and um, I, I think it's cool how they incorporate like because Axel's catchphrase is like the whole "got it memorized" memorize. thing. I love that phrase so much. Yeah, but the the fact that it like comes from uh like Rox is not remembering anything in the very beginning and kind of like yeah. or at least that's what it feels like of that it's just kind of being a natural development of like get uh, get the shit like him actually head, checking like, his memory to see if he has something memorized kind of thing. Right. Yeah. 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 And and so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. I do think that um, Roxas is overall the best written character of the whole series, probably. And like, like anybody that says that he's their their favorite character, like I can't argue with that. Him and Axel, I think. Um, although I'm not sure about Axel now that he has a Keyblade. Is that his what... main human? Like his old human got his heart and nobody back. I think. Yeah, Lee technically. Lee. Why is his name Lee? Just can't call it. Like, it's kind of weird because he all, he should look different, but they just kind of really want to give it to Axel. They want to pretend he's Axel. I think. Right. Because, like, they, because I think they have something where, like, the main person in there, nobody, consistently looked different, but he's yeah. the only one who looks just like it, which we know just means they want to give it to Axel, you know? Yeah. That's, uh, oh, well. <laughs> oh, yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, you know what, I'll do, you know what, I'll take it. I don't, that's one of those things with Kingdom Hearts where I'm like, this shouldn't make sense, it doesn't make sense, I don't care, it's just, I'm just gonna, I'm kind of cool with this, just bring Axel back, I'm happy. So I kind of, I was kind of spaced out when, when you guys were talking earlier, because I, uh, was, since you brought up 358, I was looking up a very important scene from that, from those games that I'm posting and you talk, you lose right now. <laughs> make everyone cry, haha. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, yeah, let me see. Rock is that to sting. <laughs> I, I like there's like a lot of humor to the game too. I, I mean, I think in general there's a lot of humor just because you have like lighter moments and darker moments throughout. Um, I was wondering this because I've seen this as somewhat of a criticism, but like this is also the main reason I played the game in the first place. But how do you guys feel about the incorporations of Disney and Final Fantasy into the series? Uh, mixed. Okay. Um, so I feel like um, it, and, and I, this may be colored because this is the opinion of the guy who's like um, who I'm watching his playthrough, like Dan Floyd. Mm-hmm. Uh, his um, but I kind of agree with him that the, uh, Disney incorporation is at its worst when it's just rehashing a Disney movie and at its best when it's kind yeah. of doing its own thing. Um, yeah. and I've liked most of the Final Fantasy incorporation, but I'm also not a Final Fantasy person, so I'm sure there's some of it that might, like, trigger people who are actually, like, fans of that stuff. The Disney incorporation definitely peaked with the first game, because... They really feel like they have a like a significant impact on the story because you like see that you have that one cutscene where they're like watching Sora from the crystal ball and they're like, oh, he found the keyhole. Like, what the fuck are we gonna do and shit like that? And it's like, and and you know Maleficent's leading them and it's like Male- like Maleficent's the main bad guy of that game for yeah. most of the game. So yeah, that, well, that's interesting. I actually really liked Maleficent in two. Well, yeah, she gets some development in that, which is kind of interesting. But it is, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, why is Maleficent back in 2? Like, why did they bring her back? But I'm glad they did because I do like what they did with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I do kind of get that where it's kind of like, it kind of felt like they had their own thing going by 2 that they didn't need to rely on the Disney aspects as much. But I'm just like such a huge fan of Disney stuff that I'm like, wait, you mean I get to replay a, like the Lion King as like, I'm actually fighting the bad guys? Like, yeah, sign me up. Like, even though it might not really make sense in the series, it might not be as interesting as some of, like, the other final boss fights, but at the moment, I'm just like, yeah, just sign me up, I'm cool with this, like, let's go. Right, I, that's fair. Yeah. I, I actually side with what Seventeen said, like, 
like I, I think a huge problem with Kingdom Hearts 2 and some of the other games, it's like, yeah, they're just rehashing the movies, and it's like far worse than the actual films. Um, cause like, like Kingdom Hearts 2 again, I mean, I love that game, but there are lots of, like, like, like you go to, um, Port Royal, for example. Port Royal is the biggest piece of shit world in the whole series. Oh, Port Royal is so, like, glad they're bringing back Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, okay. Oof. But, like, yeah, it's, like, you go there the first time and it's just the the movie, the plot of the movie, yeah. again, that which has nothing to do with, like, the organization, the, the plot of the organization and, um, the Heartless Army or whatever. Yeah. And then you go to the, there, then you go there the second time and then you just kind of see a new organization member for a bit and you don't fight him or anything and then you have to fight a Heartless, which is the worst fight in the whole fucking game. It right. sucks. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, uh, but, like, the things that they take liberties with and are just kind of, like, have fun with, I think, are good. Like, for example, um, I agree that, like, the Pirates of the Caribbean was one of the worst sections of that game. But at the same time, I really liked uh, Jack's rapport with Sora. I thought that was really cool. Uh, yeah. That's a good point, actually. And so uh, so there are kernels of cool, uh, cool things even in that arc. And I think it all comes down to what they decide they're just trying to, like, make like the movies versus what they decide to have fun with and kind of make into their own thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, like, like now that like now that seventeen said that like like one of the mo- more interesting scenes in Cage Two is like when Jack kind of has the Keyblade for like a second and then he like outright threatens Sora. He's like, "I'm gonna get a crew and I'm gonna fucking take the Keyblade from you one of these days." And it's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird because I think I'm just such a like Disney fan that you guys are like. Yeah, you guys are just, it's just rehashing the movies, but in a worse way, I'm like, yeah, sign me up. Let's do this. <laughs> like, I love Disney right. movie shit so much that I'm like, yeah, this is all, this is 100% true. I want more of this. So I think it was the reason that I bought the game originally. So I think there also are some really cool ways that they incorporate it. Like one of my favorite fights in uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 was the, um, I think it's in like Mulan where you're fighting. Yes, like, that, that was what I wanted to bring up. That was actually yeah. some of the best Disney rehashing in my mind. Yeah, uh, and it's really? it's always cool when you see how they do it with like um the the Disney series that don't have a specific bad guy or like you know they do have like one bad guy, but they can make it they can make it a heartless the final boss. You know, like I think right. they did do that in like that series, but um. It's been inter- like it's interesting to see, but I always enjoy it. I think they probably handled the Disney aspect better in the first game because I don't think you have to go back around to each world. I think you just do it once, unless I'm wrong about that. I kind of it's been a while, but I do think that's kind of tough with Kingdom Hearts two, where you just kind of like you go to all the worlds and then you have to go back to them. But yeah. at the same time, I kind of enjoyed it because I like that you it raises the difficulty and then you fight them all again. But I do think that, like, my favorite worlds that you visit in the series are, like, the Kingdom Hearts-only worlds. Like, Traverse Town, Hollow Bastion, Twilight Town. Is it Twilight Town? Yeah, Twilight yeah. Town. Yeah. yeah, Twilight Town. Um, Trying to think of an... Not the Des- world that Destiny, never right? was. The world that never was. But it's, like, like, the world of the worlds. Like, oh my god, I can't believe they called it End of it the that. world. End of the world, yeah. Um, Yeah, like, the town that never was, where... is that? That's the one that has the really cool skyscraper and shit, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's like icon. That's like iconic for me. That's like peak Kingdom Hearts. But then, uh, like Hello Bastion is also just like really powerful and like the aesthetic and uh, overall atmosphere of it. Yeah. Like I really just love going around to those worlds and somehow just like thinking about those and listening to the music that goes along with them. That's just like peak aesthetic shit. Yeah, two has some fantastic location design because because uh, of course uh, you're right. Like they had that like city at the very end. They have um, yeah. Twilight Town and then also. Two does a whole lot with Hollow Bastion, like while yeah. also keeping it yeah. kind of the same place as one, and that was really dope. Like, yeah, um, like I, I really liked how they changed the setting, but also kind of like kept it the same thing. Yeah, it's cool. I really like those. Somehow, just like uh, Hollow Bastion is so interesting because you get to see how it's changed so much. Like mm-hmm. how you see how it's like you start off there, and it's like this abandoned like dark castle that Maleficent has taken over. But then it becomes, like, an actual town in, um, like, Kingdom Hearts 2. So it just feels like such a staple that I feel so connected to. It's, like, it's so interesting just thinking about them. And then, like, Twilight Town, of course, has the, like, emotional connection with Roxas and everything. 
like, in a weird way, I feel, like, just as much connected to the actual, um, specific worlds as I do, like, the game itself. Right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like, honestly, like, at this point, Twilight Town is probably my favorite location. Like, it's just got such a nice theme and feels comfy, which is great for the fact that they just, like, shatter that and then, uh... (laughs) And they destroy me? Yeah. It's, I feel really comfy Uh, as they destroy my emotional (laughs) well-being. Yep. (laughs) Uh, so no it it just does its job really well in terms of like where it's supposed to fall in the story and like how it's it's meant to get you attached to the journey i thought it was a really they did a really good job of that yeah it's it's an like an interesting emotional ride like i think i could just sit around and chill in some of these worlds and like you know skate around or whatever listening to the soundtrack because i do think the soundtrack is probably one of I'm not sure if I'll say it's one of the best. I feel like it's one of the you best. You can say it's one of the best. Yeah, no one's going to argue with I'll, that. I'll just listen to the soundtrack now. So, yeah, I'll yeah, die on the soundtrack, Hill, because I think the soundtrack is like just one of my favorites and how they do such a great job of creating like individual themes for the characters and the specific world themes that fit for them. But then they also do a great job of remixing the Disney themes so you like really feel like you're in like the Disney movies and stuff and how they transition those from like the normal you're walking around theme to like, oh, there's a heartless coming around battle theme. And uh, it really helps set the atmosphere. I think a lot of people have a lot of different favorites on them. But weirdly, one of my favorite themes is, I have to check the name of it, but it's one of the themes you play in the tutorial mode of Kingdom Hearts 1 when you're fighting the giant, um, the giant shadow, like right before the end of it. Mm. And it's just this really building theme that starts off, like, really small, almost as if you're, like, seeing the small Heartless come up, but then it builds up, like, really grand when the giant Heartless comes up, and on the screen it says something like, don't be afraid, remember, like, remember what you've learned, or, like, remember, like, your light, or something. I want to say something really, like, cheesy about, like, remember about the Keyblade or something, but it's, like, really inspirational and empowering at the moment where you're trying to fight this giant Heartless so it was really cool in setting the stage. I'm going to look it up and find it because it's not one of the big ones, but it stood out a lot to me. Yeah, yeah I know curious, what you're talking no. about. Yeah. Switch themes. Was, but yeah, like a lot of the music in the game is really solid. Um, yeah. And obviously like they have the really good like insert tracks for like the beginning and ending like cut scenes and all of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the, it's called um, Dive Into The Heart. I think that's what it's called. Dive Into The Heart. The, um, honestly, the, when I first played Dream Drop Distance, I was, like, so blown away by the, because, because, again, the series had always had, like, great music, but it was, mm-hmm. it was, oh, yeah, it this was, one's good. Yeah. it was yeah. DDD in particular, where I'm just, like, every single track was, like, amazing to me. It was the first time that I actually, like, downloaded a soundtrack off the internet and, and like, listened to it on my own. Um, yeah, like, honestly, and, and I would actually say that Hikari the orchestral version of Simple yeah. and Clean is, like, probably my favorite piece of soundtrack, like, for anything. It's yeah. such an amazing piece that it's, like, how can I not get, like, emotionally overwhelmed when I listen to it? Yo. Yo, same. Oh, oh my god, I remember. So, part of my thing that I wanted to make a note of with, like, Kingdom Hearts 1 coming out was, like, when Kingdom Hearts 1 came out in 2002, like, they didn't have YouTube. Like, you couldn't uh-huh. go online and look up the opening, and you couldn't look up, like, soundtracks of things. So you I'd would make... wait on the on the main menu? Yeah, I'd make a million... I No, I didn't even wait. I would just be like, new game, and watch the opening, and then exit <laughs> out and make a new game, like, watch it. Oh my god, yeah! Stuff. Yeah, I actually did that too. Yeah. <laughs> because I was like, no way am I, like... How else am I going to get this opening? Like, the first Kingdom Hearts opening is, like... I think that was, like, a groundbreaking moment for me where I was like, this is the coolest shit of all time. Holy shit. And then I'm, like, two years older and Kingdom Hearts 2 comes out and the opening comes out. I'm like, oh, my God, this is the coolest shit of all time. Holy shit. Like, this is next tier. I actually, I only thought that, uh, that a Simple and Clean was, like, okay. But then when, but then Sanctuary was, like, Ooh. jaw-dropping. <laughs> Because Simple and Clean has the, like, Simple and Clean was, like, a banger at the time, but I think Sanctuary does a better job of probably being, like, that mix between, like, hype, but then also, like, emotional or whatever. Which is kind of like Kingdom Hearts 2 and Yeah, like, uh, like Sanctuary like, tells you from the get-go yeah. that it's, this game is going to be grabbing you by the feels. Like, it's... <laughs> it is, it, it's got many different phases to it. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, it's definitely one of the most anime things in the whole series. Yeah, it's so it's very anime, but like you know, when they start dropping like the heavy beats at the end, when they're um, 
when they're in, at the um stairs where like Riku yeah. is on the under stairs and then Sora's on the upper stairs and you see like Goofy like slays a heartless by like jumping on him and then like with the shield and then Donald like uses thunder to get all of them. First off, unrealistic because they don't do shit. But two, <laughs> exactly. really hype that they were just like we're all slaying stuff off the stairs. It's getting like super emotional. I'm hype. But yeah, like one of my favorite things is just dabbing on like how mostly Donald is just useless. Like right. never heals me at the right time. Oh, side side thing. Um, yeah. This is something that got like half pointed out in the playthrough I was watching. And then yeah. there's like the guy made a joke about it. And I started paying attention. Goofy is unironically the smartest of the main three. Like, yeah, I, I mean, that actually, money. That actually really like, is the thing. Yeah, like, he actually is. Like, I think I remember that being a point where, like, Goofy figures shit out. Sora's actually, like, really dumb. Donald and Sora are both, like, fighting for smartest, but Goofy is in here. Like, guys, come on. Yeah, like, Goofy... This is, this is clearly the right option. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. It's always been the thing that, like, Goofy is actually the smart one, and then Donald is it's the brave the... one. And he's the loud one. Like, Donald yeah. Is... <laughs> Donald trying to prove the louder you are, the more people hear you, but in this case, not really. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Yeah, no, I, I I love the dynamic of the main three, like... It really works well, for as much of the, like, sometimes the Disney things, even in my Disney standing, I can admit sometimes the Disney-ness does not work in certain situations, but I do think the collab between the main three really works out well. Yeah, so I, I think it works the best with, like, the classic Disney characters, because I also think, like, yeah. Mickey's really strong, too, and I think the yeah. reason for that is that there are... There's not, like, as much of a set canon as to what they're supposed to be. Yeah. So the game gets to take a whole lot of liberties, and it works really well for, like, the main three and for, uh, like, Mickey and that sort of thing. Runner-up for that is, I think, the Hercules stuff, because we've gotten to see them so much. Like, Hercules and Phil works out so well. Oh, yeah. With yeah. the main crew. Which makes me that's really hype. Wait, what? Yeah, I said that's true. Oh, yeah. So that makes me hype for Kingdom Hearts 3, where it's the first time I think we actually get to play in the Hercules world and not just use it as, like, arcade mode with the Colosseum. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's called Olympus now. We get ti- get to fight Titans. Attack on Titans in Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> wow. Let's fucking go. But that's, uh, I love that so much. And it also works because uh, Hercules really fits with a lot of the themes of Kingdom Hearts of like having heart and like, you know, being a hero is like, whatever. I don't know. I'm not remembering the details. but no, you're, um, Yeah, you're right. But then also, get up on the Hydra's back is one of my favorite memes of Kingdom Hearts 2, oh, <laughs> where yeah. you're fighting the Hydra and Phil just yells at you nonstop. <laughs> he get just up says it Hydra's so many back. fucking times. And then they like they reference that once in Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged, and that might be like my favorite reference where they're like, get up on the Hydra's back, you like it's one of the funniest memes. <laughs> I gotta find it. But that's like one of my favorites. But there's a lot of funny memes with just, like, Kingdom Hearts in general. I've seen some people trying, like, I saw someone dressed as Goofy trying to do the hit or miss, I guess, we never miss, huh, thing. Like, I saw that. That was kind of traumatizing, actually, but there's a lot of memes that are pretty dank. If you can replace every other word in a sentence with light and it makes sense, it's probably a Kingdom yes. Hearts quote. Like, that's... <laughs> fucking yeah, hell. It... Like, like, the meme compilation from that game is pretty great, too, of, like... There's that one tweet that Maz retweeted of, like, this is why I can't show my friends Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I was talking about. I'm just like, the... yeah, that, that shit cracks me up. I think I... it's... Got... Yeah, go ahead. I want to unironically say one day, I we totally owned you lamos. <laughs> <laughs> when we get into a beef with the rival podcast and we can drop that. <laughs> yep. Uh... They, they have some funny stuff with that. It just, yeah, it's been a, it's really fun. Um, what do you guys, well, what are your favorite worlds from 1 and 2? I'm really curious. This Ooh. Is- My favorite world in KH1 is Hollow Bastion, specifically because that has, like, the most story, and just, just, just the most story in, in the yeah. whole series, and it was like, I, I really love the theme as well. Really awesome piano. Oh yeah, that five four piano. It's so cool. Um, KH two, kind of weird answer because this kind of gets I guess looked down on a lot. Is a uh, I actually really like Pride Lands. Yo, that's really fun though. I love Pride Lands. You run like, around like so fast. And yeah, exactly. Shit. Like the problem with like easily. Okay, Atlantica is a fucking mistake. 
Like, they should have deleted it from both of the games, because in KH1, it is a fucking nightmare to play. So, and that's long. because... Was it? Was yeah. it? No, go ahead. Well, it, it's such a fucking nightmare, because it restricts your controls, like, so mm-hmm. much. And there's so much, like... You, you, there are, like, so many rules of this world. But then you go to yeah. Pride Lands, and instead of, like, restricting you specifically, they just give you different stuff to use. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's so great. So when my friend and I, my best friend and I were doing our playthrough, whenever, because I was playing on her machine and we got farther because I didn't get stuck with the X button situation. Um, whenever we'd go to Atlantica, I would always play it because it was my, because fa- The Little Mermaid is my favorite Disney movie. So <laughs> I would always play that. She's like, I'm not doing this shit. Like you get this. And I was like, yes, my turn to play without handing over the controller in 10 minutes. This is my shit. But I definitely feel that with like even in my favorite Disney movie, I was like, yeah, this is a bit tough. I got used to it, but it was pretty tricky because for me, I was like cool with most of the worlds. And as much as I love the Nightmare Before Christmas, I could not see shit in that Nightmare Before Christmas world in the first. Yeah. I loved yeah. it, but I'm like, I'm like, I literally cannot see what it, where I'm going. <laughs> Had to turn up the brightness on my TV for that one. Yeah, but then I'm kind of glad we got to go to. Um, it was cool that we got to go to what's it the. Uh, Santa, like, Christmas part of Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, Christmas Town. Yeah, so then I could see shit. I was so excited. But yeah, I think, do you think you have a favorite game out of, like, but would it be between one and two for the entire series? Or are those, like, do you have one from, like, Birth by Sleep or, like, Dream Drop or any of the other ones? Honestly, my favorite world in the whole series is actually from Dream Drop Distance. Ooh. It's um symphony of sorcery which is the fantasia world oh my god wait i love fantasia do i have to buy dream drop just dr- why can't i say it dream drop distance to see that because i love fantasia yeah i love fantasia it. too listen that world th- the thing about dream drop distance is that the worlds are kind of different where yeah. the the rooms are like a lot bigger because, Ooh, that's you, interesting. You, because you have the flow motion mechanic where you get to like move really fast and do all this climbing and shit. And it's really fun. I love that a lot. And so they open up the areas like significantly. Ooh. So you go to Symphony of Sorcery and of course like all the backgrounds are like Fantasia themed stuff. Like, um, I am going to beat the shit out of the stupid brooms. I'm going to fuck them up. Let's go. <laughs> um, I don't actually, I'm not actually sure if the brooms are... Wait. Oh no, they probably fight with them. I think the brooms would be, like, in the tower, because it, 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 it doesn't matter. But basically, the reason why this world is so great is because, okay, so you go in, you enter the world, and then, of course, you get the story context of what's going on in this world. And then you don't get another cutscene until the final boss of the world. Ooh. So it's just exploration in the in the entire place, and there's all this, and, of course, it's Fantasia, it's, like, super creative. The other yeah. thing is that... You don't hear, like, the character's grunts or whatever, the ha, 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 whatever you attack. <laughs> and every time you hit them with the keyblade, um, they make, like, some sort of musical sound. Ah, that's so awesome. It's fucking amazing. And, of course, all the music's, like, Fantasia. It's not, like, the usual, um, you know, overworld or battle music of yeah. the games, you know, where it's, like, there's a consistent theme or whatever. They just straight up play... The songs from Fantasia, and they don't actually change between battles or whatever, so it's just a constant thing, because all the songs are, like, seven minutes long or or whatever. It's just, like, yeah, it's so unique for the series at that point, and it's just fucking awesome. I got it. Okay, so I think I have this in my, like, I think I got the game that has, like, all of the games in it, so I'm, like, Uh I'm really up in here, gonna have to binge through this game before... Kingdom Hearts 3 drops to play Fantasia World. I'm going to do it, too. Like, I will do this. Yeah. Um, yeah, seriously. that the, Like, even people who hate Dream Drop Distance, which is a lot of people, say that, like, yeah, that world is, like, the world that they got right. Um, That's cool. It's really is, cool. Uh, do you think it's, like, the game... Do you think the play system, or what's that called? The game mechanics are, like, a lot worse in Dream Drop Distance, or <sighs> is it just it's, different? It's, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. Um, okay. Because, like, I, th- I think that Dream Drop Distance is actually really fun to play because I'm playing mm-hmm. it right now. And, it's, and, and some of that is due to preference because, like, I'm a huge Pokemon fan. Mm-hmm. So you get the, the party members in that game are Dream Eaters, which are these monsters that you that you just have in your party and they could just do various things. And you can, like, 
constantly create new ones and change the party and they'll give you different abilities and stuff. It's like a really fun thing to like, like to like micromanage where you like oh, complete it. Cool. You clear out an area, get some experience, and then you like, you know, go into your menu and open up your dream eaters and like see all this shit you can get. It's it, it's very incentivized. There are different mini games you can play. And I, I just love things like that. Um, yeah. So that's fun. Okay. Um, I'm excited for that. And they have the com- – that game uses a different fighting system from KH1 and 2, which is very, very contentious because um, th- those th- th- those two games are kind of well-known. Like, you can play them casually and it's fun yeah. and whatnot, but, like, hardcore players have, like, really identified the mechanics of that game and have yeah. no- have pointed out that they're, like, these really tightly well-made games because – Actually, the thing about Kingdom Hearts 2 is that lots of people accuse it of button mashing, but really, if yeah. you, like, sit down and think about how it works, it's more of, like, it's honestly, like, a turn-based RPG, where, um, at least in boss battles, where, um, like, a boss will be attacking you, and you kind of have to, like, defend yourself from that, and then they'll have an opening, and that's when you need to attack, but then, yeah. of course, you can only attack so much before they'll, like, break out and attack you, it's, like, Really well made. That doesn't exist in Birth by Sleep and Dream Drop Distance. And yeah. the com- instead they have the command deck, yeah. which have we, we, we can have all these really specific attacks. And some of these attacks are extremely unbalanced. Some in in both like really OP and really UP, where like you'll do an attack that has like a really long animation, and it'll just like leave your character open for so long that the boss can, that someone could just hit you and you just die from using it. Or Dream Drop Distance is most notorious for the magic spell Balloon, which is like <laughs> this, it deals an insane amount of damage and it stuns enemies and you can just have it in your deck and it has a very, very fast reload time. So you can just, like, it's literally a viable strategy to just fill your command deck with Balloon and just win oh, the game. okay. Because I so, got- I played a bit of, um, I forget what it's technically called, but it's the part where you play for, like, two or three hours as Aqua and the Depths of Darkness. Oh, 0.2? Yeah, I played that for a bit, and I think that one was probably, like, a mix of the two, because it had a lot more of, like, you can just attack things, but it does have the command deck, I think. I think. No, it has the, it has the KH2 system again, but okay. I, I hear they didn't, like redo it as well as those games i haven't played it yet personally it was Um, pretty fun it was like i kind of just wanted more um i i've heard good things about like it was a step in the right direction they say um but back to back back to ddd uh to to, to answer your question like it's not a very balanced game Mm -hmm. because of the command deck and how unbalanced it can be and the ai is like like there's like like there's there's no pattern to it essentially. Oh, gotcha. It's just a bunch of bullshit. But I also remember playing it casually for the first time. I actually said it was my favorite game in the whole series because I just thought it was so much fun to do all this shit. Flow motion is super fun to use. Um, the worlds are pretty well designed. Um, but again, if you like really get if you like really sit down and think about like the mechanics of that game, then yeah, there are lots of problems with it. I feel like it's one of the things where I know people bring up the, um, like, just the gameplay in general, and I think I just have so much fun playing Kingdom Hearts that I don't really care about, like, if it's technically a good system or not, or if the gameplay is, like, challenging enough or, like, well, like, you know, I just have so much fun playing it, especially Kingdom Hearts 2, because I think 1 was, like, a bit iffy with with some stuff, but Kingdom Hearts 2 was cool in that, like, it was still challenging, but you had a lot of freedom and you had a lot more moves that you could do, oh, yeah. especially with the um like hyperdrive and stuff. Two looks so, like a blast. Like I've been considering getting yeah. in and just playing that for the hell of it, even though I've already like gone through the story because that looked. Really I'd recommend fun. it. Yeah, I think it would be fun, um, especially since you like pretty much know, and it's it's just really fun to play. I still had fun playing one, and then some of the other games have still been fun, but like Kingdom Hearts Two was the nice mix of like. I had fun playing it, but I also felt like some parts were still challenging. But I also think that, I don't know, maybe if this is just too normy of me, but I don't want Kingdom Hearts to be one of those games where it's, like, super duper challenging. Like, I'm good with a nice amount of challenge, but I do want it to mostly be fun because I'm not really paying attention to, like, all the sus aspects of the story and stuff. So I'm just there to have fun and kick some heartless ass. 
But I do think, like, I think that makes sense, what you're saying, Moz, even though I haven't played it. Like, that seems pretty valid. But I'm, like, I'm just in it for the fun and to do some cool shit. I hope, <laughs> like, that's pretty much where I'm at. For what it's worth, like, th- like, the re- like, kind of the reason why there's such a debate about, like, the gameplay of this series is because Kingdom Hearts 2 was able to, like, deliver on both a fun, casual game, mm-hmm. but also you could get, like, really deep in, like, like, um, Final Mix in particular, which mm-hmm. some people don't know about because it didn't come into the U.S. until, like, 2014, but, yeah. um, like, the critical mode in that game, like, you can play that as on, at, at level one, and it's like, Ooh. like, like, that's the super challenging experience you can give to yourself. You don't have to, or anything, like, it's totally fine, but, like, yeah, the, the, like that game was able to do both really well. Whereas the other games, like you get, like you raise the difficulty and have all these limitations on yourself, and the game just feels flat out unfair at a lot of points. Yeah. That's kind of the argument. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's always it's always kind of tough because um, I still remember, like I still remember. I think it was the one fight at uh, the second time around at like Beauty and the Beast. Like yeah. that guy? I knew exactly who, who, you what knew, you were going to say. Oh just yeah. Oh my god. There's some fights in the series where like I'm not sure how much of it is like the fight in the game at the certain level is just borderline impossible versus how much of it is just like me sucking. But that guy was just like borderline impossible. I think I went to yeah. Mickey like at least three times. And that's one of those things where like you beat him like you beat him and you feel like you just won the year. Like I'm not doing <laughs> anything else this week. Like I've done my accomplishment. Yeah. Like, this it's... was it. It's a difficulty spike for sure. And I think, like, okay, it is, like, a difficulty spike, but I also think it's because the game just doesn't really tell you, like, how the optimal way of playing the game is, where, like... Yeah. Like, um, another boss that was super hard for me was Demix, because... Yeah, is that the dance water dance guy? Y- yeah, yeah. Dance water dance. I feel like, because, oh my god. The because the thing is, it. um, like, the game doesn't really tell you about like how the combat works like what i said about like it being more or less like a turn-based rpg so you can kind of play casually just hack your way through the game and then you get to this guy who completely will not let you do that and i was just like crying as a kid like why can't i beat this guy he's impossible he won't let me attack ever and he just hits me all the time and i hate this game Ah!" (laughs) That and that's just I, because the game is never really clear as to like what you're like how you're really supposed to play, and that's why some of these things exist. So yeah, um, it's not KH two is not a perfect game by any means. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm not even sure because I'm not even sure what the fan like reception is. So I'm not even sure if like people who are like super into the series will be like listening into will be like listening in and being like wow these normie opinions that i've heard before i'm like i have no idea so like i have no idea if people are going to be like classic liking kingdom hearts 2 and not playing the other ones but it's like sorry fam i'm broke i can't buy every system (laughs) for it but exactly but it's still like i think it's just so much fun like i just have so much fun with it so i'm hyped for three um i also wanted to give a shout out since we did mention hard parts shout out to watching at least 20 times before you could cut the before you could skip the cutscenes, <laughs> you know it. You know it. There's no way you're taking, you're, you're Kyrie's, taking heart. Kyrie's heart. <laughs> so oh like, my god, was, that fucking fight! So like seventeen, you probably you probably only got to see it once, which is yeah. a shame that you don't get to see the battle against Riku, who's taken over by the Heartless, at least twenty times. <laughs> god damn! Which, because yeah, I'm sure that because Kingdom Hearts One didn't let you skip cutscenes. <laughs> You, there's no oh way you're god. taking Gyrie's heart. Oh my god, it's just in like all these. And it's things legit the hardest game. fight in this game. In the game. Yeah, it's like because you're at like a lower lower difficulty level, so then it's like, well, I mean not lower, but like comparatively, that was like a huge jump in difficulty. So then you're just like, are you kidding me with this shit? Like, fucking Riku. Maybe that's why I'm not like super hot on Riku, even though he's definitely a good character. Is because I'm like I had to play this dude like 20 times <laughs> and try to take Kyrie's heart. Like that's why this guy. That's why it took him like seven games to fully redeem himself because he was just <laughs> because that he's done it bad. Too many more Every times time you... than in the normal canon story. <laughs> yeah. Every uh. single time. Uh. So, um, I don't know if you guys have anything other- else to add. So, I guess if we're going to like uh, about wrap this up soon, 
um, 17, I understand this might be a little bit more <laughs> difficult for you to answer, but do you guys have any, like, wishes for Kingdom Hearts 3? Mm. That's a mm. tough one, because I'm, co- I'm totally cool with, I think there should be another somewhat bittersweet, but mostly sweet conclusion to the series. Like, I don't think they're going to get away without someone dying from the main squad that they're building. And I don't mean, like, Sora Kairi like Sora Kairi Riku I think it might be like one of the uh, Aqua Ventus kind of or what's the other dude Terra I think it might be one of them I wouldn't be against one of them you know kind of biting the bullet for this I do think like someone might get sacrificed I don't know who I did see I heard some things that apparently was it in one of the trailers that like Aqua was norded I don't even know oh yeah Aqua's a bad now she's the bad after being in like the depths of darkness for like 10 years but i'm not i'm not really sure what that'll mean i don't even know if it'll mean anything in the series because you know it's like kingdom hearts you can i'm i don't know but i think they're kind of serious about that um i think it might be a sad i might it might be something sad where like the only way to save everyone is to cut off the connections between all the worlds so everyone might just go back to their own world and it'll be kind of like a re- it'll kind of reiterate the theme of even though we're not with each other all the time like as we have our memories and we think of each other that's kind of like we made meaningful relationships and that's how we kind of like keep our hearts strong or something you know like thinking of all the important memories and friendships you've made even though you can't be together all the time so that i can be see it. that being my bittersweet ending but yeah. i think it'll be cool what were you saying no yeah i was just i was just agreeing yeah. yeah. So I think it'll be something like that because then it'll be symbolic of us saying goodbye to Kingdom Hearts forever since, at least until the next iteration. But, you know, we'll be saying goodbye to the series, but we'll have our memories as fully grown adults now, thinking back to when we were kids. We can recount all the happiness and all the uh, tough battles we went through and feel strong, stronger because of it. Are there any worlds that you want to see? Mm. Are they still going to announce they, them? Or they, so, so they haven't announced anything yet, or what if they, well, they? What do we know? We do know the we worlds do. that we the worlds that we know that are in the game are Olympus. Um, I I don't know the specific names of the world, but yeah. Toy Story, Monsters Inc., Frozen, Tangled, mm-hmm. and Big, Big Hero, Hero Six. 6 um, are definitely the, in the and games. Pirates of the Caribbean again. And Pirates of the Caribbean for, again for some reason. I um, think it's because it's big in in Asia. But um, yeah. Those are but, those are those are the worlds that are in, and I know that's not going to be it. There's going to be like that's a, that's only seven worlds. Yeah. So I know that I don't want any more live action Disney properties to be in there. I don't like the live action Disney properties to have their own things, kind of in the vein of Pirates of the Caribbean. I definitely don't want Star Wars or Marvel. Oh God, think, yeah, that would be a mistake. <laughs> I would just really hate that. Even though you know I like. Star Wars and Marvel, but they don't feel like Disney. They're legally Disney, but they don't feel like they have the same Disney properties to me. Yeah, and, and, so and even more so than that, like, they're such kind of big universes on their own. Like, yeah. the normal Disney worlds that you can kind of get away with being like, we'll just cut out, like, yeah. the main story of this and make it smaller, but you yeah. couldn't get away with that to the same degree with, like, a Star Wars or Marvel thing. Yeah, I would just take... I just don't want them to do that. I don't want them to open those doors. I don't want them to go down that path, especially in the conclusion to the series, you know? It d- should not be, like, don't do that. But then, um, I think... I do want to see Hollow Bastion again, Twilight Town, and, um, Traverse Town. I want to see... I want to see them still play a part. Twilight Town is still in. We, Which one? We still, have, we still have Twilight Town. That's Twilight definitely Town? in the game. Okay. So, I don't know if Traverse Town will be included, because I do think they made that a big part of um, Dream Drop Distance. I think that was, like, a... They yeah. made that a spot. So, I don't really know, because it's such a, like... Or, like, this is the beginning of stuff world. Like, this is the beginnings. We might not include it in the end series. But uh, Hollow Bastion would definitely be a cool one, and uh, Twilight Town. Yeah. I don't really know. I don't know what other Disney things they'll feature, but um, I'm not really sure. I think Winnie the Pooh is back, which is always, like... Oh, like, yeah. Movie. Yeah. I'm always torn on that because it's, like, cute, but I don't care. Like, whenever I play it, I'm like, Same. yeah, this is precious, but I don't want to do this. So, that's back for better or worse. I don't really know what else will be in, but I am excited to see, like, what else they have up their sleeves. Um, One world that I want to see yeah. is, if they if they can somehow do this, um, I want the Aristocats. 
Because oh, the Aristocats. Okay. That'd be a good call. Oh my God. That'd be fun. That would be so cute. The Aristocats oh was my favorite movie when I was like five years old. <laughs> oh, it's and a good And if they have it film. in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Yeah, if they have it in Kingdom Hearts, I will like die. Yeah, that would be, that'd be really so nice. cute. I, that would be so awesome. Yeah, because it's weird because I think in um, like Birth by Sleep, they definitely tried to utilize a lot of like the older Disney things where they had like Snow White, um, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella. I think they mm-hmm. had another one that I'm forgetting about. But They had all the princess worlds. Yeah, so I hope they all oh, the Aristocats would be so cute. I love that. I feel like they could have incorporated that with the um, Dalmatians too. It's so sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is very similar to the Dalmatians. Yeah. Um, the other other wish that I have, um, I I I think they kind of implied that they will do this based on Dream Drop Distance, but I want mm-hmm. the the World Ends with You characters to come back. I think yeah. they'll. I think it would make sense if they have like their own world in KH three. Um, yeah, I've always heard good things about that series, but I never got to play. That it's game is trendy. that game's a masterpiece. It's one of my favorites Ooh. ever. Ooh, um, I'm excited. Yeah, although if they do come back, then I hope they kind of change the dialogue because it's a uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> in it, Dream maybe Drop. it'll fit right in. Like, there's no way you're taking Kyrie's heart tier. <laughs> uh, it's kind of worse than that in Ooh. a lot of places. Oh, that's. That sounds like Cause, it's worth looking up to see the cringe. Oh, no. Because the thing is, because the, the thing is, the world ends with you is like, it's a text-based thing. Yeah. Um, kind of like visual novel cutscenes. Yeah. So, you kind of, you, you read it and it's not that bad, but then you actually hear someone say it and it's like, oh, no. It's not trained prostitute bad, is it? What? Well, that's from, a, you know, in um, Fate Stay Night when uh, they have one of the H scenes and it's a... Uh, Shiro's internal monologue during oh the my god she was like a well-trained prostitute <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my favorite take that's one of my favorite ones it's like well-trained prostitute and then there's the one of like maybe she she maybe she can't breathe because my dick is in her mouth <laughs> kind of like god damn. okay well. it's not on that level but I, w- I actually w- would prefer that level. <laughs> we, this is the level we all want, but we don't all get it. Yeah. Oh, man. The Fate H scenes are us. Uh, they're, they're a treasure in and of themselves. Yeah. The, um, and the one last thing that I hope would happen in Cage 3, although it seems kind of unlikely, uh, because the Final Fantasy characters that are in Kingdom Hearts are the ones that are designed by Nomura. Yeah. But I just really would just it would just make my fucking year if Kefka is in Kingdom Hearts Ooh, because he be would cool. fit he would fit like I could actually see him like legit working with Maleficent because that would yeah. like perfectly mirror what he did in Final Fantasy 6 and it just yeah. it would just make so much fucking sense make it fucking happen well, I can't say he'd make it happen because the game's technically over um, so, it's done yeah. so. retcon it make it happen yeah take it we need back. it last we need to go back last minute like Dev Rush Add this entire plot thread in. DLC. Don't, would you be? Can, what if he was? Um. What if he was like a bad guy in like the Colosseum while you're fighting that stuff? Kind of like a Sephiroth. Would I that actually be like. Yeah. Would that be okay, or would you be like wasted potential? Um. I'd be okay with it. I I I would I would be fine with that to be honest. Um. Just okay. like just seeing him in the game, especially since you know Sephiroth. Had a bigger role in King in Kingdom Hearts too, so it's like they yeah. could they could still do more with him. Yeah, they're, later. they're probably bringing Sephiroth back, right? Because that thread was kind of just like. Well, do you beat him in Kingdom Hearts? I never actually be- beated him, defeated him. There's the word. I never yeah, defeated you... him in Ken Kingdom Hearts too because I sucked. But <laughs> does like anything happen after you defeat him? You have to tell Cloud that he's there, and then he and then Cloud fights him, and then they both just disappear. Right. Okay, so Cloud is so just that, gone that, for that a bit? feels like, yeah. So that, fe- kinda weird. that feels to me like a dropped thread where they're planning on kind of bringing that back. Bring back Cloud. Yeah, especially with the with the remake. Yeah. Bring back Cloud. I, I enjoyed and- Cloud in Kingdom Hearts. I thought he was good. Also, King- fucking Tifa was hilarious. I love uh, Tifa. <laughs> yes, yeah. the ship is confirmed in Kingdom Hearts 2. They confirm it that they care for each other and all that shit. It's cute and I love it. But yeah. They, like, I love Cloud's uh, inclusion in Kingdom Hearts, because he really kind of fits that, like, oh, like, I forget, what is his thing? Like, he thinks he doesn't have a heart, but then, like, in first game, he does. I don't remember. I don't remember the details, but he worked out really well. Him and, um, who's the guy from Kingdom Hearts? No, I mean, Final Fantasy X. He worked out really well, too. Uh, Leon? Fun. 
No. Wait, no, Final Leon's Fantasy... 9, 9. No, Final Fantasy... Leon works out really well. I know in the uh, Final Fantasy sphere that Leon and Final Fantasy VIII kind of get a lot of shit, but I think Leon is really perfect for Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Yeah, he fits think... in there really well. I, I, yeah. I think I'm looking up the characters of Final Fantasy X. I think it's the guy... Auron? Yeah. Oh, okay, Auron. yeah, Auron. Yeah. He worked out really well for for um Final Fan Kingdom Hearts 2, Jesus. Yeah, he worked out really well for his role with uh Hades in the underworld and stuff. Like he worked out well. Yeah. Yeah, again, as someone who like doesn't know a lot of the Final Fantasy stories, I liked how a lot of those characters were incorporated here at least. I I, I don't know if yeah. they got ruined from the perspective of, like a fan of Final Fantasy fan, but I'm not super, like, I haven't actually played a lot of the Final Fantasy games, but I've done the similar treatment of, like, reading the wiki and then watching a lot of playthroughs, so I'm, like, like to pretend that I'm familiar with them, but I'm not, like, a, I'm a fake fan. Right. But I think they've done a good job, especially with, like, Leon, Cloud, um, Sid is Dank, and, like, I think they've done a good job with the Final Fantasy people, arguably better than the Disney people, but, I mean, well, I, the I, Disney I, I people are on of, because. Uh, at least yeah. to me, it's like for the Disney people, they also come with like a lot of baggage of their own plots. Yeah. Whereas the Final They're Fantasy, more just, like yeah. characters come in wholesale and are just like, I'm part of the Kingdom Hearts story, and that just tends yeah. to work better. Yeah, exactly. So they're less involved, but their involvement is probably less like jarring than the Disney stuff. Exactly. But, yeah. So I'm glad. I so can't. I'm glad with them. I hope we get to, maybe we'll see uh, more Final Fantasy characters, like different ones that we haven't seen before, because they've always included more ones. Um, I'm sure Noctis know. is going to be in there, or at least Noctis and maybe the other Final Fantasy 15 characters. Do you think uh, is um Lightning? By I wouldn't be so. Oh, um, I don't know. I it it in. might depend. I I've always imagined that they would because like. You know, it seemed like yeah. Square was so insistent on Final Fantasy Thirteen being, like, their big thing. But I don't know. I don't know if people really like Lightning that much. I thought she was big, but I'm not sure. Loki, I don't like, know if this is a sleigh, but I just think of her as Pink Saber. Like, she's literally just Pink Saber. <laughs> she is kind of Pink Saber. It's like, yeah. she, it's like, I don't know, she was popular for a couple of years, but, like, yeah. since, like, 2014, I've seen nothing about that character yeah. on the internet. Yeah, it's like, we just kind of sure. forgot about Thirteen pretty quickly. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that. So, I don't know. It'll be fun to see. Do you have any predictions for the ending? Honestly, no. <laughs> I don't, because I was, like, making stuff on, like, some kind of bold prediction, but I don't really know what they're going to pull. Yeah. I think they've nailed the endings for each game pretty well, so I'm pretty confident they will have a good ending, but I don't know what that ending will be. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It should be exciting. Are you going to get the game and play it, Seventeen? That's the big uh, question. Yeah, that is that is the big question, right? I think probably, yeah. Um, nice. Like, I, I'm hyped enough for it. I might get it in a little bit, though, because, like, I, I'm just enjoying kind of watching this playthrough as it comes out, and it's obviously, like, not gonna finish by the time uh, yeah. uh, that game is out, and it's gonna go through all the things. Um, so, sort of depends, but yeah, I'll probably end up playing it. Nice. That's good to hear. So, amongst the, like, you've done all the research... You're in the process of finishing up the research, and now you're going to be like, now let's get into it. Yeah. Yep, pretty much. Uh, like, I, I'm enjoying this series. Like, as much as it's, you know, really sus at times, like, it's it's fun. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's a fun ride, and it seems like a genuinely, like, good character story at its core. Um, yeah. Uh, and I, I think the reason that Kingdom Hearts works so well a lot of the time is that, like, a lot of the worst aspects of it are aren't, like, central to why you care about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Yeah, yeah I think it yeah, should Yeah, I be. definitely see what you're saying. Like, I would you, agree. you, like, the script itself is kind of bad at a lot of points, but, like, you get the point of it, at least, and that's what mm -hmm. makes it good. Yeah, which I think is going back to what I said with earlier about, like, bloated, like, um, because it, it, it's not like, like, the, um, Riku looking like, um, Xehanort bit wasn't bad, but there are a lot of things in the script that are just kind of, like, tacked on, and you could theoretically condense mm -hmm. the Kingdom Hearts story into something shorter, and it might technically be better, but at the same time, you also have just, like, a lot of good, yeah. like, tiny, genuine character interactions throughout, so it's like, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think... I don't think I'd ever say that the plot of Kingdom Hearts is why I like it, 
But I also don't think the plot kind of ruins why I like it, which I think is kind of what you're saying. Yeah, it, exactly. Much... I, I, yeah. I think our boys just may have needed, like, an editor at times, but, you know, it's yeah. it's whatever. <laughs> Someone probably needed a due date, because here we are 13 years later. Yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm ex- I'm excited because from what I played through with that uh, Aqua playthrough, um, the graphics are going to look insane, which I'm really hyped for because half of the fun for me is definitely just doing crazy dope shit. And it looks like we can throw like trains and stuff at Titans. Oh, I'm what all the in. Let fuck? Me... Okay. I yeah. haven't seen any like gameplay from this yet, but that looks, oh, yeah. that sounds nuts. Some it's of the pretty gameplay fucking just crazy. looks ridiculously fun. So I'm going to throw some trains at people. This will be fun. Like if anyone comes out with like, you know, oh, like, you know, the specifics of the game are, like, not up to par. I'm like, dude, I just threw a train at someone. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm throwing trains at people. It's looking hype. Literally running train. Yeah, I'm running train on all these titans. Come at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I'm, I'm just excited, yeah. I'm so excited. It's, this will it's, be it's, so it's, fun. It's, it's a weird kind of excitement because it's like, again, kind of like we said, it's been so long that it's like, it hasn't fully kicked in that this is really happening, but yeah. Yeah, because uh, my boyfriend was the one who like, he got me the game as like a late Christmas present. So he's like, are you excited? I'm like, it hasn't really hit me yet that it's like, I think it's as like, of tomorrow a full week. Yeah, it, it's like tomorrow it's a week. Well, I'm sorry. There was no, a delay. Sorry, um, I, sorry. It's I was like, like as of. No, go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we won't really feel it until we actually get the game. Yeah. And then even then, we might, like, we'll wait until we play the game, and then we'll be like, okay, now we're, like, now we've done it. We've Like, now, the game. now it's here. I think, like, I don't know, maybe not you, 17 because you're probably waiting a bit, but, like, I'm also going on, like, full shutdown. Like, when the game comes down, like, I won't be online. Like, no one can talk to me. I will be... Sitting in front of my TV, playing it until I beat it. Right. Yeah, that's that's not going to be me. I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to give it some time. Like, <laughs> I, I enjoy the series, but I don't have, like, that childhood emotional investment that has oh, yeah. me, like, slamming it and just, like, I, I need to play this right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. That is understandable and healthier in the long run. Yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I say that as the person who just binged the entire Neverland manga in two nights, so. Also fair. Yeah. And we've we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm excited. I hope everyone else is excited. If people aren't excited, I don't want to know. Like, people who are listening, if you're listening and you're not excited, um, I'm going to close my ears and pretend. Go you're away! <laughs> yeah. Don't shit on my childhood. I'm looking at you, Sinris. I'm looking at you. <laughs> it was like, even though I, like, Fuck was you, Sinris. <laughs> I bet he won't even listen, and people are going to be like, yo, they, sl- they slayed Sinris. Piece of with facts shit. and logic. Well, yep. over under on if uh, Donald actually heals you in this game. Okay, honestly, real talk, I never really had that problem with Donald. I think it's more exaggerated, but I definitely had many times where I died because Donald did not heal me. And I like, like, he definitely just fucked with my shit. Yeah. If any, if anything, like, maybe sometimes I'd, like, heal and then he'd heal me and it's like, yeah. oh, well, Thank thanks, you. I guess. I didn't want to waste but, uh, my all my HP, but here we are. Like yeah. or my magic my magic points, yeah. Anyway, I think that's I think we're done now, so let's let's stop before we get into another ten minute conversation about <laughs> all of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Works for me. All right, thanks. Thank you for listening, everybody. Um, especially if you listen to this whole thing, since this is not an anime p- thing, but it is an anime podcast, and we're gonna have um, some big episodes coming up soon. I don't know when Becker plans on releasing the year in review. I think that's pretty soon. I don't know either. Soon. I think it's soon. We'll find out if it's before or after this. When uh, Tune in next time to find it, out. It, yeah, hopefully. And uh, also we've got first impressions of the winter season coming about next week. So get Ooh. hyped for that. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, yeah. Um, check out the Discord server if you haven't. Chat with us there. Um, listen to us on Spotify or Google Play or wherever else. I'm not actually iTunes? sure what platforms we're on, but we're on like yeah, iTunes. We're on like every platform, I guess. Subscribe. Uh, Share post with us on Twitter. Leave a comment. Oh yeah, and Twitter. Follow the Twitter. You just tweeted Tokyo Big Chungus today. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, how could I forget about my big Chungus tweet? The best tweet um, of our Twitter. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Thanks again for listening. See you, see you later, everybody. Get up on the Hydra's back. <laughs>